Well, we can start on trig. So, a quick reminder of the very basics of, of trig. It is all to do, of course, with the right angled triangle. We begin to investigate trig. In, the, in order to do trig, we name some sides, the longest side, of course, being the hypotenuse. And once we refer to a particular angle, and you've probably noticed that we tend to use Greek letters for the angles when we're dealing with trig, so there's a theta, that the one across is opposite, the one next to is adjacent. And then we learnt they are first three ratios, sine, cosine and tangent are the actual names, not sin, cos and tan, they're just the abbreviations. So the sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse and tan opposite over adjacent. There is also what we call the reciprocal ratios. Uh, called that because you'll notice they're just the other ones upside down. Uh, it's sort of counterintuitive though, because you'll notice the reciprocal of cosine is secant and the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. You would have thought whoever came up with this would have matched the co with the co, but anyway, they didn't. They decided, no, 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 let's make it confusing. So, okay, sine, reciprocal of sine is cosecant, reciprocal of cosine is secant, and the reciprocal of tan is Cotangent. The very, very basics. Well, here's a, uh, a trig equation to solve. Sine x is equal to the cosine of 25. And for the sake of these initial ones, we're assuming everything's acute. Because obviously there's an infinite number of answers for this. I just want the acute one. The co in cosine, of course, stands for... The co stands for complementary. Complement, remember, means angles that add up to be 90 degrees. So the sine of x is the cosine of 25. Well, what's the complement of 25? So we go, oh, well, what's 90 minus 25? x must be 65. And with the complementary ratio, so the same is true for uh, secant and cosecant. The same is true for tangent and cotangent. The sine of 20 will be the same as the cosine of 70. The sine of 10 will be the same as the cosine of 80, and so on and so on. Those angles will always add up to 90 degrees. So that is what the co stands for. I'm surprised you haven't been told that before. So if I want to solve this one, the cotan of x minus 20 is the same as tan of x plus 30. Well, I know those two angles must add up to be 90 degrees. So x minus 20 plus x plus 30 is 90, that uh, gives me x is 40. Again, assuming we're talking about acute angles, and at this stage we're just looking at the right angle triangle, so they are. So the uh, standard sorts of questions we have with trig then is finding a side which is not the hypotenuse. Uh, so we've got to work out oh, which ratio we're we talking about. I've got opposite and adjacent, so oh, that's 10. So A over 13 is the tan of 61. A is 13 times the tan of 61. And I suppose the only thing we need to watch out for when we're using our calculator, we have to make sure it's in degrees mode. There is another angular measure which we'll look at later called radians. Okay. And it will give a different answer if your calculator says RAD or R, depending on your type of calculator. So you just make sure it's in DEG or, or D, or however your calculator displays it. And to one decimal place, that's 23.5. So the second type of one is, oh, whoa, what happens when it's the hypotenuse? We could use the reciprocal ratios to get that pronumer on the top of the fraction because we could say, oh, hypotenuse over. There's not much point doing that, though, because our calculators don't have the reciprocal ratios on them. It only has the three basic ones. So really, we want to get everything in terms of one of those three basic so I've got adjacent, I've got hypotenuse, so it's 5 over x is the sine of 32. So x will be 5 divided by. And that's 9.4. The third type, of course, is finding the angle. Uh, this time I've gone adjacent and opposite. So cosine theta is 10 on 14. The middle line that we write down, and sometimes we don't, I don't know whether you've been uh, made to get into the habit of writing it or not, uh, would actually be that. To undo the cosine, we do the opposite of cosine, which is called inverse cosine. 
And when we look at something called inverse functions, well, we've seen a bit of them uh, when we looked at functions, but the inverse trig functions, and that's what that symbol means, cos to negative one, it doesn't mean to the power of negative one, it means the inverse function of cosine. That is why we have the reciprocal ratios. You will never see trig written to a negative power because it means something else in trig. Minus one means the inverse function. And so to solve that, um, uh, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Conflict of thinking minus one means one over, we have the reciprocal ratios. So cos the inverse cosine, and on your calculators, you may notice above the cosine button is written cos with a negative one. So you have to press second function or inverse or whatever your calculator does. Uh, 44 degrees, 25 minutes to the nearest minute. There are some exact ratios that crop up a lot. And it's a good idea to know them to save some time. The first one comes from an equilateral triangle. I've got an equilateral triangle. All the sides are 2. It also means all the angles are 60. But if I chop it in half, I end up with the classic 30-60 triangle. So that's why I made all the sides two. So that when I chopped it in half, I didn't end up with fractions. So this side becomes one. The hypotenuse is two. By Pythagoras, we can work out the other one as the square root of three. I can now read off that triangle, the exact ratios for 30 and 60. So sine of 30, a half, cosine 30, root three on two, 10 of 30, one on root three. I can also read off 60. And there's that complementary ratio idea. Notice, cosine 30, same as sine 60. Sine 30, same as cosine 60. Adds up to 90 degrees. The other triangle is our right-angled isosceles triangle, which has both angles 45 degrees. If I make both those sides 1, again with Pythagoras, we get the square root of 2. And I can read off the exact values for sine, cosine, and tan of 45. Notice sine of 45, same as cosine 45. 45 and 45. Equal 90. Here's another way of remembering them. I don't know if you've ever seen this pattern. If I go 0, 30, 45, 60, 90, and sine. Sine works out to be square root of 0 on 2, square root of 1 on 2, square root of 2 on 2, square root of 3 on 2, square root of 4 on 2, for all those values. Now, obviously, square root of 0 on 2 is 0, and square root of 4 on 2 over the other side is 1. And in the middle, square root of 2 on 2 is the same as 1 on root 2. But there is the pattern with the exact values. It's a lovely, neat pattern. Cosine reads the other way. So it starts at the square root of 4 on 2 and goes down to the square root of 0. Tan, you may or may not remember the relationship between tan, sine and cos. Tan is sine divided by cos. So I don't have to worry about the... Uh, denominator, I just look at the numerators. So, north on root 4, root 1 on root 3, root 2 on root 2, root 3 on root 1, root 4 on, well, root 0, of course, is undefined, and that's why you can't find the tan of 90 degrees, because it's undefined. So, so, there's another way of remembering those exact ratios. However you decide to remember them is up to you. Measuring angles. Angles of elevation. So when you're reading those word problems with trig, what do all these things mean? An angle of elevation. Well, elevate means to lift or to rise. And so you have an angle of elevation from somewhere. It's always of, from. What you're looking at from where you're standing, if you like. So this diagram here would represent the angle of elevation of B from A. So I'm at A and I'm looking up at B. So that would be the diagram for the angle of elevation of B from A. We also have an angle of depression, which is a very similar diagram. To depress means to lower. And that would be the angle of depression of X from Y. So I'm at Y, I'm lowering my line of sight down to look at X. The interesting thing is the angle of elevation will always equal the angle of depression. So if I'm at A looking at B, my angle of elevation would be the same if someone was at B 
looking at A and they, their angle of depression. Alternate angles, basically. Compass bearings. Right? North, south, east, west. That's nice if they happen to be exactly perpendicular and things like that. But then we can divide it up exactly halfway and we say, oh, north, east, south, west. We, we always start with the, um, the vertical ones first. So we start with north or we start with south. We can divide those again. North, northeast, east, northeast. So we start with the, I guess, the highest in the, um, the hierarchy, if you like. So the blue lines would be the highest in the hierarchy. So I go east to northeast rather than going northeast to east. I could theoretically go again and uh, halfway between east, northeast and northeast. Well, I would start with the northeast because it's higher in the hierarchy. And so halfway between would be northeast, east, northeast. But then it's starting to get a little bit ridiculous. So that's when we start just saying, OK, I'm going to start at either north or south and move so many degrees to the east or the west. Now, a true bearing. We always start north, how far we've measured clockwise. It's interesting that we do it clockwise, by the way, because you might remember everything else with trig, when we're measuring angles, we always go anti-clockwise. But for some reason, in the real world, with bearings, we go clockwise. Here's X and here's Y. So the bearing of Y from X, that means I'm starting at X, so that is where I put my compass. If I know that's 30 degrees, so the bearing would be 120 degrees, and often you'll see a T next to it to say, this is a true bearing. So 120 degrees T. Bearings are always three digits. So if, if it was a, a two digit number, it would go zero, three zero or something like that. As a, a, a compass bearing, that of course would be south 60 degrees east. You start with the vertical one, six south, and I would move 60 towards the east. If it was the other way around, I want to know the bearing of X from Y. So now I put the compass at Y. I know that angle is 60 degrees. A bit of geometry can work that out for me. And it turns out to be 300 degrees true bearing. Or as a compass bearing, north 60 degrees west. All right, now you'll notice in 4A I've just said pick some. I think they're just basic calculator questions. Just make sure, yes, I know how to use my calculator to work out those things. But it is important, obviously, we know how to use our calculator. Just pick some and make sure that you can.